Hey what's up guys Josh here. So you clicked on this video because you want to know what those things are. But before we get into it I've posted a couple of videos like this in my channel so go check it out if you're really interested in such stuff and also if you like them then make sure that you subscribe to the channel and also turn on the notification so that you won't miss any of these contents in future. Now with that being said let's take a look at the things that you should not do with your laptop or a computer. So the first thing is installing some unknown applications then this might be from some uh, fishy websites and the website is not always something that you can suspect from its uh, look it's made to be professional to fool the people so there is a tip that uh, look for the protocol of that website the top left corner there you can find it if it is HTTPS then it's secure it doesn't mean that you can download anything from that website but it means that that is, very, that is a verified and a secure website that's it if it is a HTTP website then just don't do anything with that website close that website as soon as you enter it because those websites are not legitimately secure now apart from this if you want to download some application but you have a premonition of bad consequences after installing that specific application that it could uh, impede your workflow and something could turn out to be not well then in such cases i would recommend you to create a restore point before installing or downloading that application now creating a restore point is not that complicated it's basically simple all you have to do is uh, go to the search tab type create a restore point and then click on that and then here hit on the create tab then put a name that you can remember and identify and that's it now if you want to uh, protect your pc more than this by several methods i've already done a video about it i will give a card to that video uh, i guess this side i hope that video will help you to save some money from spending on stuff that will have simple solution the second thing is handling the laptop carelessly although no one would uh, intentionally do such stuffs. I've just come across some stuffs that you should not do in your laptop. It's physical stuffs. So let me tell you them one by one. And it's, uh, it's also subtle. So don't be disappointed if uh, they are not that useful for you. But I've just thought that they would be some uh, worth noting things. So the first thing is spilling any liquid on top of the surface of your uh, of your laptop if you have anything around the desk of your laptop around the laptop some liquids if they have the potential to spill on the uh, top of the keyboard then i recommend you to get rid of that because the top of the keyboard is the most vulnerable part of the whole laptop they have small little tiny spaces uh, between the keys of the laptop plus the important thing is that most warranties won't cover damages that occurred from liquids so make sure that there are no liquids that can potentially fall on top of your laptop and the next thing is lifting the lid from the corner of the laptop do know that some laptops have some cutouts or something like that to lift the laptop that would make uh, it easy for the user to do so uh, and some laptops do have some grooves in between the lid and the keyboard so that they can put their finger inside the groove and lift up the lid but most laptops I've seen so far don't have so so people tend to use the corner of the laptop to lift up the lid well in short term this won't have any effect on on the lid of your laptop but when it comes to the big picture the long term they can potentially have some impact in the lid of the laptop although they are tested tons of times in a, a factory before launching the official product they can still make some tiny difference uh, in the overall build quality of the laptop after several years of usage so not that thing and the next thing is also subtle it is carrying your laptop around with a bag that trembles a lot while you travel basically most of the laptops coming today have hybrid solution they tend to have a hard disk, hard disk inside them which is supposed to have moving parts inside it in order to run it so according to the internet it is also recommended to not carry your laptop turned on or you put it on sleep mode and carry it with your backpack which trembles a lot during your travel well it is basically a no-no so just don't do it and the next big thing is blocking the vents of your laptop now most users are aren't really cautious about blocking their vents they are unaware they put their laptop on a couch or a bed well if you basically put a laptop on a surface like this laptops have small you know legs at uh, the bottom of them around the corner so that they lift up the laptop from the surface 
to a slight extent that air can freely flow at the bottom of the laptop to make the cooling solution work properly but on the worst case if you are using your laptop if you leave it on a couch and use it then in such cases you know the uh, surface completely blocks because the legs that lift up the laptop won't, won't longer able to lift up the laptop like that and remember heat is the biggest enemy to your laptop so be aware of that now the next not to do thing in the list is deep cycle well deep cycle is basically depleting the uh, battery completely and then charging it up to 100 percent again now both of these things are not good for your pc i mean depleting the battery completely up to zero percent and also completely charging the battery up to 100 percent they both are not good for your battery according to a lot of uh, internet users on the web because when your battery is at the zero percent as well as when it is at the hundred percent it is a lot stressed than what it is usually according to some researchers 40 to 80 percent is the sweet spot for the battery and above that and below that is always some sort of a stress to your laptop although depleting the battery doing a de deep cycle is recommended for the calibration of a battery laptop's battery inside it it is not always recommended frequently it can be like once in six months or a year because most laptops coming these days are already accurate so it is not necessary to uh, deplete the battery completely in order to recalibrate the battery percentage now the next thing that you should not do is actually a do thing but it's not recommended to do i mean it is keeping the battery plugged in all the time to the charger well technically it won't have any big effect in your laptop if you if you keep the keeping the laptop plugged in all the time then it's not gonna have any bad consequences in your laptop to a bigger degree it's not something like that but like i said keeping the laptop at zero percent as well as at 100% is stressful to the battery. So in that manner, the laptop will be always at 100%. That's why it is not recommended to charge the laptop, keep the laptop plugged in all the time. If you are at your work, then you are supposed to, you know, if you are playing games, then you are supposed to plug in the laptop and play it to get that extra juice and performance from your laptop. I would recommend you to, you know, plug out the charger from the laptop and make a little cycle frequently whenever you get a chance to do it and like i said before 20 to 80 percent or 40 to 80 percent is the sweet spot for a battery and even some laptops have some comes some additional features my laptop the asus stuff a15 asus provides a software inside it which has this option that enables me to stop charging at certain percentages like 60 80 and 40 which is really helpful all right now we are at the end of the list the last thing that you should not do with your laptop is connecting to another charger. You know, not all the laptops, all the chargers supply the same amount of electricity to your laptop. So it can definitely affect the battery of your laptop. That is why it is not recommended by any company or manufacturer to use a charger that is not built for your laptop. Just like using another charger for your smartphone. And that's it for this video guys. Hope I gave you some useful information and if you find this video helpful then you know what to do and as soon as I get more information like this I'll provide you with more videos like this in future so make sure you do that. Thanks for watching this video guys and I'll catch you in the next video.